In exploration, the goal is for a robot to explore an unknown environment. Specifically, we want to ensure that the unknown environment is fully covered. In the ground truth view on the left, we see the robot represented by its depth sensor rays in orange. Here we simulate the robot being in a house surrounded by trees. With the depth sensor, it can detect free space and build a map shown on the right. The representation shown on the right is a grid-based representation used in most state-of-the-art exploration algorithms. It works fine as long as there is no drift in the state estimate. Unfortunately, real systems that are deployed in unknown environments tend to have drift. As soon as drift is introduced, the grid-based representation breaks down. This can be mitigated to some extent using loop closures and trajectory optimization. Green lines on the left show loop closures. Note that after every trajectory optimization, all arrays must be retraced anew. This is computationally expensive. This cost can be somewhat reduced using submapping approaches. Still, there are some scenarios where traditional exploration fails, even with loop closure capability. Here, we see that the exploration algorithm terminates prematurely, as the estimate is bent out of shape in a way that makes the robot miss the upper part of the maze. So, what if we rethink the representation that is used for exploration? Our representation is based on local volumes. These volumes are constructed as follows. Depth samples are labeled as either frontier samples, if they exceed the sensor range, or as obstacle samples, if they hit an obstacle. All samples and the robot are connected to form a polygon. The edges of the polygon are then labeled either as obstacle edges or frontier edges. Frontier edges are called frontier edges because they represent the frontier between known free space and unknown space. An unknown environment is fully explored once the known free space is bounded only by obstacles. In other words, Exploration is complete once no frontiers are left. So to use our representation for exploration, we need to meaningfully remove frontier edges as new measurements come in. We call this process frontier consolidation between neighboring local volumes. Local volumes are associated to the vertices of the robot's pose graph. In a consolidation scope, local volumes are consolidated. If the edge of a volume lies within another volume, inside the consolidation scope, it is labeled as free. Here we show our representation deployed in the same environment, but without and with noise in the pose estimate. As soon as a loop closure occurs, the consolidation scope also involves volumes around the recognized place. The fundamental difference to traditional approaches is that we don't use the global state estimate to position the consolidated volumes relative to each other. Instead, all volumes are transformed according to the shortest chain of relative transformations. Here, the red volumes are transformed according to the relative pose estimation obtained in place recognition. This approach lets us deal with even very strong drift in the pose estimate. So, using proximity in the pose graph instead of a global 3D reference frame is robust to drift. The previously shown failure case of grid-based representations in a maze is now fixed. However, this comes at the cost of longer completion times. Here we see how our approach compares to traditional grid-based approaches. As we can see, while the final coverage is always 100% unlike traditional approaches, the distance traveled to complete an environment tends to be longer. This can be explained by the fact that with our representation, the robot needs to cover open spaces with loop closure in order to be sure that it can remove frontiers. Meanwhile, an approach assuming perfect state estimate can consolidate frontiers between two locations, even if there is no place recognition between them. As we show in the paper, the larger the distance from which places can be recognized, the faster our approach terminates. Note that most of the volume still tends to be covered in similar time. This is most likely due to the exploration algorithm, which prioritizes exploring new regions over completely covering already explored regions. 
We also validated our approach in a real-world scenario. We use a ClearPath Jackal for our experiments. The odometry provided by ClearPath is used as state estimate. We intentionally do not use the best available odometry to induce drift in our small experimental space. As depth sensor, we use a Hokuyo laser scanner. For place recognition, we use two fisheye cameras whose images are stitched into a 360 degree panorama. The vertical field of view is purposely limited to make sure that different places in our flat experimental setup look differently. Finally, we use a motion capture system for ground truth. Since implementing visual teach and repeat from scratch was outside the scope of this paper, we also use ground truth from the motion capture to mimic visual teach and repeat. As we can see, the real-world experiment validates that our method works not only in simulation. The robot covers the full environment, even though its odometry exhibits pretty strong drift.